In this class, we will discuss about one of the applications of Laplace equation. We will take the example of coaxial cable. The objectives of this class is to obtain the expression for potential between conductors of a coaxial cable and to derive the capacitance of coaxial cable. Consider a long coaxial cable as shown in figure. The radius of inner conductor is A and the radius of outer conductor is B. Let epsilon be the permittivity of the dielectric medium between the conductors. This figure shows the cross section of the coaxial cable. The potential of the inner conductor be V0 and the potential of the outer conductor be 0. The point to be noted here is the potential is varying with respect to rho coordinate only. It is not varying with respect to phi and z. And the region between the conductors is charge free. Hence, Laplace equation can be applied. The Laplace equation is given by del square b equal to 0. In this particular case, the Laplace equation in cylindrical coordinates with only rho variation is given by 1 by rho, rho by dou rho of rho dou v by dou rho is equal to 0. Since 1 by rho is not equal to 0, we have dou by dou rho of rho dou v by dou rho is equal to 0. In integrating equation 3, we get rho dou v dou rho is equal to c1. And on rearranging this equation, we get equation 4, which is dou v by dou rho is equal to c1 by rho. On integrating equation 4 with respect to rho again, we get v is equal to c1 log rho plus c2. Now, we have to make use of the boundary conditions to determine c1 and c2. The boundary conditions are v is equal to v0 when rho is equal to a. So when rho is equal to a, v is equal to v0 in equation 5. So therefore, we obtain equation 6. And the second boundary condition is when rho is equal to b, that is rho is equal to b, we have potential v is equal to 0. Therefore, we obtain these two equations 6 and 7. By using these two equations 6 and 7, we will be able to obtain C1 and C2. By solving 6 and 7, C1 is obtained as V0 by log of A by B. And C2 is given by minus V0 into log B divided by log of A by B. By substituting C1 and C2 in equation 5, we obtain the expression for potential, which is given by equation 8, which states that V is equal to 
v0 into log of v by rho divided by log of v by a. So this expression 8 gives the potential variation between the two conductors of the coaxial cable. Now we can also obtain the electric field intensity from the expression for potential by using the relation E is equal to minus gradient of V. So by applying gradient operation of, on V, we obtain the electric field as V0 divided by rho log of V by A and the electric field is pointing in rho direction. the electric field we will be able to obtain the electric flux density. The electric flux density is given by epsilon times the electric field intensity. Therefore, D is given by epsilon in, into V0 divided by rho log of V by A. Here, we are taking only the magnitude of the flux density. The surface charge density on the inner conductor is obtained by substituting rho is equal to A in the expression for electric flux density. Hence, by substituting rho is equal to A, we will be able to obtain the electric flux density on the surface of the inner conductor, which is nothing but the surface charge density on the inner conductor. Therefore, we obtain the surface charge density as so, epsilon v0 divided by a log of v by a. Because we obtained the surface charge density on the inner conductor, we will be able to obtain the total charge on the inner conductor. Let us consider a unit length of the coaxial cable. The charge on the surface of the inner conductor is given by q is equal to 2 pi a into rho s which will give 2 pi epsilon v0 divided by log of v by a. From this we will be able to obtain the expression for capacitance which is given by c is equal to q by v0 and the capacitance of the coaxial cable per unit length is given by 2 pi epsilon divided by log of v by a.